Then we move on to synchronous versus asynchronous replications. Every time we say RAID or replication or mirroring or whatever we say, there are two choices. One choice is that you do synchronous, which means that when somebody asks you to write, you write primary copy and you write the secondary copy. Only when the secondary copy is written, then you tell the guy, I've finished the job. That is called synchronous. That is called write, immediate write. There is another thing called delayed write, where you write on the primary and then you say, okay, I'm done. And then in the background, you write on the secondary. What is the advantage of that? Yeah, it's faster, right? But what is the disadvantage of that? Yeah, if the primary fails, secondary is no good, right? So you take chances. In fact, when you do even on a single disk on your computer, there is a choice for you to decide whether you want write delay or not write delay. And there are some operating system commands by which you can set up so that your disk is delayed write. So what happens is when you write your disk, it is not written to the disk, it is written to the memory. And at some point, the operating system will write it to the disk, right? And so you can set up some registry commands which say that whether you want to delay it or not. Delayed write is very fast, but then if you lose something, you, you may lose the data. So now we come to virtual storage area network, vSANS. And NCI is the standard for it. So there are two ways. First way is we call Jones. And John is actually you can call it virtualization, or you don't have to call it virtualization, or basically you can divide the, so you can say, well, these ports are zone one, these ports are zone two, these ports are zone three, and some ports can be in, in both zones. So this is basically some kind of, you know, I mean, really more like a physical, well, I mean, there's no physical boundary, but at least there's administratively defined partitions, that is a zone. And then these people will not be able to access these disks and these people will not be able to do other disks. So basically this is like keeping the department separate. That you can just do by telling the switches that okay, this is zone one, this is zone two. And in fact, there is something called login server in fiber channel where when a disk comes up or a switch comes up, it goes to the login server and says, look, I am so and so and I have just come up. Then it says, okay, all right, you are port number three and you know, you are supposed to talk to this zone and you're part of this zone and all that. So login server just tells you your, what you can do. So, but virtual storage is, is very similar to VLANs. It came up from the Cisco and now it is a standard and it is very similar to VLANs. We won't go into detail, but basically um, they have, um, just like VLANs, there is a frame in the, there is a frame, there is a thing in the frame which tells you which VLAN it belongs to and where it can go and which port is not allowed and all that. So it becomes more logical rather than physical. And each vSAN, the key thing is that each vSAN provides complete fabric services. So here the problem is in the zones, even though there are three zones, there is only one login server, there is only one name server and there is only one zone server. And the name server, by the way, is, is the one that just translates, it tells you the physical addresses for a given logical name. So you share these servers, and therefore if one of those goes down, the whole system goes down. Here, in VLANs, each of them will have their own servers. So each VLAN will have its own name server, login server, zone server, so this is basically true it will, it looks like a true SAN, full SAN. This actually, the, I, I said the story. The story is that VLAN were here, and then the Cisco who makes networking switches, they got into the fiber channel business, and they said, why don't we do vSAN here? And then ANSI took it over and made it standard. So it's a standard now, but they, it came from VLAN. So the way it works is now, you could have, this is a physical storage network, you have lots of servers, they're all connected to a vSAN switch. Sorry, not vSAN, a SAN switch, and maybe a router to go to some other types of things which are not as smart, to disk arrays, and to tape libraries and all that. But your physical view, logical view is as follows, is that it, it is that you have a server which are connected to virtualization, virtualization appliance, so each of these servers thinks they're physically connected to some set of disks here. Right, you can divide 
you can connect anything to anything by this device and um, this device can be two ways one is in band or out of band in band means the data plane will go through the device so all the all the data packets have to go through the device another one is when the data plane is not goes to the device so the device is simply a name server when you want to write you it tells you which place you should go to and then you just go to the, that place so you, you send the data to that place all right so the control goes through this name space root but the data goes straight in this case everything goes through the device so this could be a bottleneck so there's in band and out of band and the people the companies who make all these storage devices like emc and other companies meta ibm itachi they make different kinds of these um, virtualization appliances so the final thing is san versus nas so everything that we talked about in this not fine okay there is more to it everything is talked about so far is san a storage area network we didn't say the word ethernet anywhere right everything is fiber channel that is san as soon as you put ethernet what you get is a nas network attached storage so none of you have seen san i suppose but all of you have seen san nas right is there anybody who has not seen nas right you connect your device you connect to a server if you have server at home or you connect to some server here or something like that through the ethernet and you can reach the remote disk that is all nas san would be when you use fiber channel or something like that so nas is connected over ethernet or the general purpose which now it is ethernet only and then you know san is fiber channel so let's talk about nas so the first protocol that came up was called iscsi iscsi and uscsi and the rscsi and so the thing is this scsi thing was if you wanted to reach an scsi device over ip network then we need a protocol ietf went ahead and designed whole protocol and there is an rfc whose number i have not put here but you can find it on the wikipedia page by scsi there is a protocol basically you can send your scsi commands over ip where they will be where they will reach a real scsi device at the end so to your computer it looks like you are writing to an scsi but there is some driver which sends it over ip it requires no dedicated cabling because you can go over the internet and use tcp and that's the bad part it requires tcp for end to end flow congestion control and that is very slow tcp means that one block is lost which is quite possible you have to wait for long, you know to time out and everything else and so anyway but the thing is it can use the same ethernet port you don't need anything and and then there is something called isns internet storage name service can be used to locate storage resources just like they have name server on the fiber channel here we have isns which you can look up to see where the disk called x is located so you you reach the disk by its name but then it has to be translated into an id at some place and that is done by isns then the next one came internet fiber channel protocol <clears throat> where you can connect fiber channel over tcp ip and um, so this is a converter you take a fiber channel packet and convert into ip packet by removing the fiber channel header putting the ip header and sending it to the ip device so on so forth so this becomes just ip data and um, so this is a converter this is also uses tcp and um, so basically what you have is ip to ifcp this is ifcp it is called internet fiber channel this guy speaks internet fiber channel protocol these devices don't they just ip devices this is the device that converts ip packet to fiber channel and fiber channel to ip and from here on the packet will go on the fiber channel all the way to where it needs to go so this is the ifcp port then came fcip fiber channel over ip now what is the difference 
So fiber channel over IP is tunneling. Now this is again another thing we teach in 473, tunneling. Tunneling means encapsulation. So what you do is, when you want to send an English packet to Japan, you put into an envelope, write the address in Japanese. So every Japanese transfer switch or person can forward it and when it comes out of Japan, you take the envelope out and back into English. Right, that is called tunneling to Japan. Or uh, encapsulation because you put into an envelope and you put the Japanese address on the top, so that's why it is encapsulation. Same thing you could do for the fiber channel thing. You could take a fiber channel packet, put an IP header on the top of it. So the whole SAN header remains inside. Now, once it becomes an IP header, it can go through the IP network wherever it needs to go. Once it comes out, we take out the IP header and we are back to fiber channel. So this is used to connect two fiber channel devices. Both have to speak fiber channel with the IP network in between, right? So you understand the difference between FCIP and IFCP. Here, we take out the header, put a new header, send it on. Now it cannot come back to a fiber channel device because fiber channel information is all lost. Here, the SAN header is saved. It goes to the IP network, right? And so now when it comes back, everybody understands that SAN packet. All right, finally we have FCOE, fiber channel over ethernet. Now, both of the previous ones used ethernet, sorry, both of used TCP and TCP is not very good. So, so why not just forget the whole IP world? Ethernet can do it all. So we do fiber channel over ethernet. So maps the FC directly over ethernet, replaces the layers with the ethernet. So this is like the first protocol that we talked about. So the headers are replaced and it goes to the ethernet port and you use it. So this is what is used generally. So today, what you will have in data center is the host may not have any fiber channel port. They will have ethernet port. The storage will have the fiber channel port. So it will go on the fiber channel. At some point, there will be FCOE switch. It will convert into ethernet. Now, the only problem with this is this is ethernet. So you cannot really go over IP on this one. So if you have two subnets in between the router, that you cannot do. And so this is designed only for one subnet. Virtual file system. So actually, I think we already talked about this, is that the storage access is either block-based or file-based. Now, file systems are also many file systems like NTFS and FAT32. But there are many virtual file systems, which means that the file system which are located on a different network. And Windows, we call them distributed file system, Windows distributed file system, which means it is not physically on your desk, on your computer, it is on some other computer, but you are accessing it remotely, that is a virtual file system. Windows DFS. Linux also has a DFS, which is Windows implementation. There's an AFS, Andrew file system from Carnegie Mellon, and named after Andrew Carnegie, who is the founder of Carnegie Mellon, Andrew file system. And then there is a parallel virtual file system, which distributes data across multiple servers to provide concurrent accesses. So this is all just like RAID. The last one is just like RAID, but instead of going physically, you go over a network. So that is the end of this lecture, I think. And um, the summary is six key messages. First is that the SCSI is a common interface used on storage devices. So you know that. And then there are a lot of other things that are not relevant, which were ETA, SATA, SCON, PyCon. Really, fiber channel is the one which is used in the data center. Right? So that is the storage area network. Then we understood the RAID, which allows you know, RAID is actually, I discussed RAID here because it does give you a virtual view. You think there is one disk, but there are four, five, six disks behind it, right? You think you're writing once, but there are two copies being made. So that's why I had to put that in. Then there are many NAS protocols. I mean, protocols will go over the network, ISCSI, IFCP, FCIP, FCOE. So you have to know that finer difference between these four protocols, all right? What is the difference? Basically, some use IP, some don't use IP. Some some can go back to the SAN, some cannot go back to the SAN. SAN is fiber channel based, NAS is Ethernet based. So now you know the, clearly the difference between the two. And the virtual file system basically allow you to reach files by the network. Okay, system which is not really you know it could be very different from what you see. 
for example, a virtual file system could allow you to look at a disk which is not local and you might be able to in fact, some of them, like I don't know AFS, but most likely it does allow you to just fake a NTFS partition where at the receiving end, it might be stored as some other partition, right? So we don't know what is at the remote end. So that's the end of this lecture. Um, there is no homework. There is a reading list. Um, the third reading you don't have to do because it is not on Safari, but if you can find it, you can use it.